Hello, I'm Carol Doak, and I'm excited to be here to share with you some insights into my new book, 60 Fabulous Paper Piece Stars. When I asked a group of quilters online what they would like me to share with them about this new book, lots of them said, we want to see how you choose fabrics for the star blocks. And so that's going to be the focus of this video is how I go about choosing fabrics for a star block. I'm going to use the Alabama block in the book as my first example of how I went about choosing fabrics for that block. And so I printed out the foundation and you either want to have the book or the foundation in front of you so that you can look at this little drawing right down here. This is called a block front drawing, and it's actually what the finished block would look like um, for a quarter of the block. So it actually is this foundation in a finished image. And so I'm going to use that to be able to position the fabrics on how I would like to use them in that quarter section of the block, which obviously will be repeated throughout the block. It doesn't have to be, but Typically, when I choose fabrics for one quarter, it's repeated throughout the block. So I'm going to move the camera down um, now and pull in a whole group of fabrics. I grabbed a group of fabrics um, to just use as an example. There we go. And what you'll see here is a range of fabrics. And I started with this fabric here. This is what I call a focus fabric or a main player fabric. It's a fabric that I can use to pull my other fabrics together in a combination. I already know I like this combination of colors because it's in this fabric together. And so my range of fabrics go all the way from a very light value, a dark value, and most of these up to here are medium values. Here's another light one, so I could put this one up here with the, the white. And then kind of really light, um, a little bit darker. Now, I have fabrics here that are both warm and cool colors. Warm colors are these fabrics, what you would see in a fire. So they are the, the pinks, the reds, the yellows. They appear to kind of pop forward. And the cool fabrics are the blues and the greens. And so why do you want to know about warm and cool? Well, in creating the block, you want to create a contrast. So if I'm trying to put together two fabrics that are both cool in a medium value, I'm not going to create as much contrast as I would if I put a warm and a cool medium together. So can you see how the, the peachy color looks so much lighter and pops off the blue as opposed to the green, which is more subtle and laid back. So that's why I like a combination a lot of times both that are both warm and cool. So the next thing I'm going to do is audition the fabrics, how they would be used in the block, because I want to see um, how they're going to interact with each other. So I'm going to take the same approach I took with the Alabama block using a background fabric that's a print because that's how I drew the colors for that block. And so I'm going to lay it out as the background fabric for the quarter of the block. And so now in using my little block front drawing here, I'm going to position the other fabrics against here. And there's lots and lots of different avenues that I can use. I can use a black and I'll lay it out as a star point. And so that could be the fabric that I'm going to use. I'm going to use the foundation to show you. So it could be the fabric I'm going to use here and here it could be black. And then I could use another combination of colors something that will contrast with the black for the smaller triangle. So that would be this fabric and this fabric. And then uh, towards the center, might want to use, go from the cool fabric 
So that's a neutral, that's a cool. And if I did this little tiny center star in this hot pink, you can see that I have plenty of contrast against the print, the blue, and the pink. One of the phrases I use all the time is the smaller the piece, the bigger the bang. I could also use the yellow against it, but it doesn't pop quite as much as the pink did. But let's say I went another way. Let's say I use the black as a background for the block and use the print as, let's say, the outside triangle here and here. And what if I then use the blue? Well, let's try something different. Let's go with green. What if I use the green, which kind of pops, and go back to this peachy color pink? So because those are both fairly light, um, it's a little more subtle than the previous one where I had the brighter blue and the darker pink. So I could do that. So it's just a matter of playing with the different fabric combinations and seeing. Now I also could do instead of both, both of these being the same fabric, they could be two different fabrics. So I could have blue on one side and the lighter blue on the other side and then the print in the middle and go back to the green or go back to the pink. That kind of dies against that fabric. So I might go maybe green against it. So that would be another combination that you could put together. One little tip that I don't often do, you notice that I left this white fabric over here, is if you put white in the center of a block, like this, if I did the black background and these two um, on the outside and this on the inside and then white, the white almost comes across as a hole in the quilt. So I try to avoid using that approach. I could use the white as the background and actually another tip is you pick out a fabric where you like the combination of colors and don't even use it. Just put together fabrics that have those colors in it. So I could do shades of blue, shades of green, and the pink in the center. So that would be another approach. So I'm gonna bring the camera back up. Um, so you see there's lots and lots of different variety and it really comes down to what floats your boat. But once you decide what fabric you want where, then all I would do is write the fabric color on the foundation. So let's say I did this one. I would do white, white, and I'd go dark blue, lighter blue. Another tip I often do is if, a, if I'm doing two shades of blue, and the bigger piece, and I have a dark and a, a light or a medium and a dark, I will make the darker color the bigger piece and the lighter color the smaller piece because darker is more subdued and light pops out. So by making this the darker and the lighter, let's see if I can show you what that would look like. So it would look like that as opposed to that. So you see the light really, really pops out on the bigger piece. So it gives it a little bit more balance if you make the bigger piece the darker color and the lighter piece the smaller color. So I would just write the colors on the foundation and then it's just a matter of going to the cutting list that's in the book and you would just write your colors for the number where you're using it in the block. And then you can just go ahead and cut your fabric pieces and label them. I tend to use just a stick em note and label them with the number of where they're gonna go in the block. 
And then when you're ready to paper piece, it's just a matter of lining all your fabrics in numerical order and paper piecing your block. <clears throat> I hope that's helpful. Um, I'm just gonna show you one more block here. This is the Acadia block. And <clears throat> when I said, <clears throat> sorry, this was actually the inspiration fabric and there's very little pink in there, mostly green. So I used the pink and kind of went to purple for the brighter pieces in the block and then used the darker, more subdued pieces in the middle. And this kind of comes across with that um, phrase, the smaller the piece, the bigger the bang. So these little tips out here, I wanted to really pop. So I made them the brighter piece. So I hope that helps. Um, you can also use the blocks in the book. You look at the quilt behind me, those are some of the National Park blocks. You can use those blocks in the book for inspiration, inspiration for putting fabrics together in any block in the book. So enjoy making your paper piece stars. And this is Carol Doak talking about 60 fabulous paper piece stars. Mm -hmm.